In the Gospel reading today, our Lord giving us this parable of the vineyard speaks to the chief priests and, and to the others that were there, and he says to them that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people yielding its fruits. And so we have to then ask ourselves, are we yielding fruits to God? Are we really doing what we're supposed to do? The kingdom of God has been now given to us. And there is a responsibility on our part to make sure that we are reacting and doing what we ought. And we look around at what's going on in the church today, and well, at least on the objective, it is a resounding no. We're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're not bearing fruit for the Lord. In fact, we're doing quite the opposite. But then it comes down to the subjective, to you and me individually. We must be very careful to be able to look and say, not to look and say, well, but look at what all these characters are doing, so it's okay for me. If it's okay for these priests and bishops and cardinals or whomever it may be, well, then it's okay for me. No, it's not okay for them. It's not okay for us either. We are still responsible to the Lord. Remember, we were not baptized into a priest or a bishop or a cardinal or a pope. We were baptized into Jesus Christ. That is our only hope. That is our only salvation. That is our only Lord and Master. He is God and He is Lord. And we each one of us needs to be able to say, He is my Lord. He is my God. He is the only Lord and God. But we have to make that subjective now and be able to say, I must serve him with my whole heart and soul and strength, even if others don't. We look in the first reading and we see what's going to happen. You're going to try to do what God wants you to do. You're going to be persecuted, even by the people who claim to love you. If they don't want to serve the Lord, you're not going to be real popular. We know from history, they're not going to tolerate you. It's one thing to look at it and say, well, fine, you want to serve the Lord and I don't, go. No, no, no. Oh, no, they're not going to do that. No, they're going to try and trip you up. They're going to try and cause you trouble. They are going to persecute you. And those are the people who love you. What about the ones who don't? They're going to make your life utterly miserable, if they can. But you know where the misery comes from? When we look at ourselves. Then it's poor me, and look at what all these horrible people are doing to me, and why don't they like me? It's not about me. It's about him. Remember they said if they hate me, they hate you, it's because they hated me first. They hate him. And therefore, we need to see it as a privilege. If people are going to treat us the way that they treated him, it's a gift. Oh, that's not intended as a gift, not by the people, but by the Lord it is. And we just have to look a little further. When the Lord talks about the fact that he is the cornerstone, the one rejected by the builders, became the chief cornerstone. There's a line that somewhere along the line got added in there, whether it was supposed to be or not, is a question. It's taken out of most Bibles these days, but the time when this one was translated was still there. And it says, and whoever falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and upon whom it, whomever it falls, it will grind him into powder. Everyone is gonna be answerable to the Lord. He alone is the judge. And we're all going to have to stand in front of him. And we're not going to be able to say, well, that priest said, or that bishop, or that pope, or whomever it is, God's going to say, yep, I'll hold them responsible for what they did or didn't do. Right now we're judging you. It's not about those characters, it's about you. Every one of us knows what our marching orders are. 
Love God with your whole heart and soul and strength. Strive to be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. All these things that we know. Love your enemies and pray for your persecutors, he said. Not treat them the way they treat you. Not think that it's okay to try and justify why it's okay for us to do these rotten things because look at what these other clowns are doing. No. He alone is the standard of judgment. We need to look at his teaching and his life and then apply it to ourselves. Not the teaching or the life of some priest or cardinal or bishop or whoever it is. The life of Jesus. The person of Jesus. Now we can look at him and say, well, yeah, he's the judge and, well, he's the Lord and he is God and all, and all that is true. But look at it a different way. He's the one whom I'm supposed to love with my whole heart and soul and strength. Oh, we can serve out of fear because I'm afraid I'm going to be judged. That's not going to be too good either. He wants to be loved, not to be feared. He wants us to love him. That's what we're all called to. And if we're doing that, let the neighbors complain. Who cares what they have to say? Some of you perhaps had to deal with that when you wanted to get married. People were opposed to it. You had to make a choice and say, no, I'm going to marry this person whether everybody want, likes it or not. And if they're going to give me grief for it, I'm going to defend this person and I'm going to be with this person. Well, this is the one you're supposed to love way more even than your spouse. And so love him, defend him, protect him, serve him because he loves you and he wants us to love him. That's our vocation in general. That is the call for each and every one of us, without exception and without excuse. So again, remember, it's not comparing it to anybody else. It's comparing it to Jesus, to him alone. That's what we're called to. The kingdom of God has been given to us. And we have a responsibility to be able to extend that kingdom to as many as we can by the way we live, by the way we speak. Most importantly, however, it's by our example. So live it, embrace it, and don't make it any more difficult than it needs to be because it's really very simple. Just love the Lord with your whole heart and soul and strength. Everything else will follow.